What's good, guys? It's your boy, Maurice Nation, uh, known as Mauricio Jimenez. Y'all may know me already. Today, I'm going to be doing another video interviewing Mr. Rocha and Ms. Lara. Uh, they're from College and Career Center, and uh, I'm going to just let them introduce themselves. Yeah, so I can go first. Uh, my name is Mr. Rocha. I'm one of the College and Career Readiness Advisors here at Austin High School, and I predominantly work with 9th, 10th, and 11th graders. Hello, everyone. My name is Ms. Lara, and I'm the College and Career Readiness Advisor that works with all of the seniors, so 12th graders. So yeah, guys, uh, I brought them here today because I just want to ask them a couple questions, you know, uh, about how can juniors and seniors and overall people can get, you know, ready for college and what can they apply for, you know, so I'm going to just ask them a couple questions, but it's nothing too crazy. So we're going to uh, dive right to it. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching another episode. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, comment down below what other videos you guys want to see and we'll be doing, we'll be doing more videos. So yeah. Um, how you guys doing today, Ms. Ms. Ro Mr. Rocha and Ms. Lara? Doing good, man. It's it's Friday. There's never a bad Friday in my book. Um, we're here at the new campus uh, since Monday. Well, the teachers have been here since Monday, and the students just came back on um, Wednesday. But yeah, it's a good environment to be in. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's been good. Um, the new college center is really nice. So if anybody <laughs> wants to stop by and visit us, then we're in G215. So it's a really nice college center. It's definitely an upgrade. It's very good to be here. So yeah, guys, if y'all want to make sure to go check it out, y'all make sure to go uh, go on Teams and uh, message Ms. Lara or Mr. Rocha and y'all can stop by. Definitely a great place. I'll be sure to go visit as well. But yeah, uh, let's dive right to it, mister. And uh, the, fir the first question is going to be, what should students be doing right now to prepare for college or trade school? So really good question. So kind of how I wanted to, to do it as well is like, I'm going to talk about the underclassmen. So 9th, 10th and 11th. And Ms. Lada is going to talk a little bit about the seniors since that's kind of our, our expertise. Yeah. So uh, let me start off with the freshmen. Uh, right now, that's the main group that I am working with. But, but if you're watching this and you are in the freshman class, there's a couple of pinpoints that I think that you should be focused on right now. Number one is going to be your grades. That's going to be the starting point because a lot of times what students don't realize is that starting off with a good GPA is going to put you in a position of power, right? Meaning like your GPA can, can fluctuate a little bit if you start off strong. But if you start off with a really low GPA, then obviously it's going to be harder for you to kind of bump that GPA up as you go throughout your school years. So number one, mm -hmm. your grades, it's going to be your GPA. Uh, second is going to be joint clubs, organizations, sports, get involved at Austin High School, right? We're at this amazing campus. So make sure you start getting involved and that's going to be able to shape your resume as you go on through high school as well. Uh, third, start to commit to doing community service after school and on the weekend. That's also going to be a resume booster. So freshman year, it's an awesome time to start doing that. Um, fourth, start to study for PSAT. Uh, PSAT is the preliminary scholastic assessment test, right? We all know that the SAT is, is taken in your junior and your senior year, but PSAT is just as important. So start studying for that exam. Um, and last but not least, slowly start to scholarship search. Uh, a lot of times underclassmen don't know that you can start searching for scholarships as early as middle school, right? Some of the times seniors, you know, they, they start senior year, but you could have been starting since earlier. So make sure you do that. So that's for freshmen. Sophomores, um, it starts to get a little bit more serious, right? Start to do some, some career and college searching and start to find your interests, like in general. Like, what, what are you good at? Uh, I know, uh, Marcus, you know, you do your YouTube channel and you found that early on. So that's something that's really, really cool that you started to dabble in. And you found that about yourself. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, go to different field trips when available, of course. I know COVID is a little bit uh, messing things up for us right now, but go to different field trips, college tours, programs, and presentations that Austin may have. Uh, start to put focus on scholarship, right? So keep focusing on scholarship. That way you put more money in your pocket. Uh, sophomore year, to be honest with you, is all about exploring and dabbling in different areas. And last but not least, my juniors. Juniors, this is when it starts to get very, very serious, right? You, you're, you're in that, that year prior to senior year where you're going to make your ultimate decisions after life, right? Or after high school, sorry. So juniors, uh, this is when things start to get serious. Go deeper into your research when it comes down to what it is you want to do after high school. It being college, it being a career, it being a trade school, it being military, right? Whatever it is that you plan to do, start to develop a plan uh, as to what it is you want to continue with. Uh, continue with scholarship searching, obviously. 
uh, work on your personal statement essay. And I say this, and I know Ms. Lara can, can vouch for this, is because usually that personal statement essay gets utilized your senior year a ton. But if you work on it your junior year, then you're, set, you're setting yourself up ultimately for success for your senior year. You're kind of doing it early. That way your senior year, you're not struggling with it so much. And all you do your senior year is apply to these colleges and apply to these scholarships with that personal statement essay. Um, SAT is going to be the, the first exam that you take your junior year. So really put full focus on that. And more than anything, it's, it's all about just being prepared your junior year and creating a plan for your senior year. But that's ninth, 10th and 11th. I know it's a lot, sorry, but you know, I just want to make sure I want to yeah. get every single grade level. That way, whoever is watching this video knows what they should be doing. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Right. So, so uh, go, go ahead, Ms. I was just going to say for seniors, um, at this point, you are already in your last semester of high school. So at this point, we really just, as a part of the College and Career Center, we really want you to have a plan, right? So it doesn't have to be college, right? If you know that college might not be for you, then you can um, have a plan as to where you're going to work or what you what field you want to work in. That's really what we want you to do. So at this point, you are, you are either applying to college or having a resume. Um, just keep in mind that sometimes you don't have to think of college just like high school. So you can, um, there's a lot of fields like welding that you never, you, you know, you're working with your hands. Some people don't like to be, you know, studying math or science necessarily. There are fields out there that you can do that are not, um, that you're not gonna be in an office. You're not gonna be indoors all the time, right? You're gonna be more active. So there's definitely a career out there for everybody. At this point, um, you definitely want to have already been uh, starting applying for your financial aid. I know that college, you hear that it's really expensive um, and it can be, right? But that's what financial aid is for. So um, I know we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but that's what financial aid is, is for. It can help pay you for your college classes or even pay for the entire amount. So so basically like um, for them to start preparing is like just join any clubs, anything that has to do with school related. So they can have like a rest, kind of like a resume, you know, like they can join a, you said, you mentioned even sports, right? Even joining sports can help them. Yeah, for sure. Even joining, joining sports can, can be a resume booster because you never know whenever you do have those scholarship interviews. Um, if they ask you, like, how are you involved in, in high school and not just in your classes, but what are you doing outside of the classroom? Having that sport next to you can be a, a conversation starter, right? Saying, oh, well, I'm the team captain. And that shows leadership within, within the sport that I play, right? So it's definitely a conversation starter. And, and something also, that I want to add, Mauricio, is what you said is it doesn't have to be school related. Like, for example, um, you, like you, you, you have your YouTube channel, right? That's something that you that spends you spend your time with that that sets you apart from other students. There are students who are really involved with their church or really involved with a certain group um, off campus. Right. They might not be involved in anything in school, but you might be involved in something out, out of school. So that really sets you apart from everybody else. Um, whenever colleges are figuring out if you're going to get accepted or denied, they're looking at, okay, did this student participate in anything versus, oh, this student at least, you know, ha uh, you know, participated with the church on the weekends. That really, you know, if only one's going to get accepted, it might be the one that was more involved. So, so just basically just putting your, your, your being like uh, kind of unique from everybody else, uh, finding what you love, you know, because right. there can be somebody that loves band, somebody uh, like, like for say me, um uh, becoming a entrepreneur you know like youtuber that would be kind of like mr mackey that's why I, I really related to mr mackey uh when i first came to austin i was really interested because i was like where's the entrepreneur class in like business class in austin Stephen of austin and that's where i came across mr mackey and uh i knew that he was a uh, he taught on young entrepreneurs and he has his own group and i was i really loved that about mr mackey and then uh from there we just started having a connection and he just showed me the way around school Cause that's what I relate to like entrepreneurship and uh, building a business and online and all that. So I really related to him on that end. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. Um, what is the difference between scholarship and FAFSA? Where should students apply? Okay. So um, I will take that question. I know that, like I said, college can be expensive. So sometimes you see, you know, 2000, and $8,000, $10,000 um, for tuition every year. And yes, that's a lot of money, um, but that's what scholarship or financial aid is for. So financial aid has three types of, um, three different types. 
So scholarships, grants, and everyone knows about loans. So the three of them, um, I think everyone knows what loans are, right? You have to pay that money back if you take out that money. Um, but the biggest difference between um, scholarships and FAFSA is that scholarships can be part of the school that you're applying to for like the university, right? So let's say you're going to the University of Houston and they're offering you a scholarship to go there. That is money based on, you can get an athletic scholarship, you can get an academic because of your good grades, or just because you're a first generation college student, you're the first to go to college out of your family. So there are a lot of different scholarships that you can get from certain universities and from outside organizations. So I'm sure everybody has heard of um, like the McDonald's scholarship, Gates scholarship, all, you know, all of those are from different businesses or corporations that are hoping to give money to students that, so that they can go to college. Um, and then uh, FAFSA is just some, uh, an application online that is federal. So all you know, U.S. citizens and residents can, sorry, U.S. citizens, yeah, U.S. citizens and residents can apply so that they can get uh, money from either the federal government or the Texas government. And so that is also free money that you could get that you don't have to pay back. That's the bell. <laughs> so uh, other than that, you, if you are not a U.S. citizen or a resident, you can still apply for financial aid, and that's called the TASFA. And so that's money that you can get from the state of Texas. So even if you are undocumented or have DACA status, you can still apply for financial aid. So you don't have to think that you're out of luck and have to pay for it yourself. You can still apply. <clears throat> you you want to add to that, Mr. Rocha? For the most part, I think she covered it all because a lot of the, the financial aid and scholarships um, has to do with like senior year. Of course, underclassmen can still apply to scholarships, and I actually mm. help students uh, do that using websites like Unigo, College Board, uh, FastWeb, scholarships.com, right? So underclassmen can apply to scholarships, and they're out there, but for the financial aid aspect, that's going to be more for, like, uh, seniors whenever yeah. they apply for their 12th grade year. Mm -hmm. So that's more like for you already, like, kind of like me, like senior, like I'm already going to graduate and you know, head on to the real world. So that's more towards seniors. So sure. from juniors, freshmen to juniors, that's more of like, your, your, yeah, scholarship. Mm -hmm. yep. And I will say, small plug. <laughs> yeah. For our ADA attendance, please submit your ADA attendance at this time. Thank you. <laughs> so I was going to say that the priority deadline for FAFSA and FAFSA is January 15th. So if you guys are watching this before that, be sure to submit it by that deadline. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I basically covered everything on that question. So uh, let's jump into the next one. What advice do you have for students who rather just get a job after graduate? Like, let's say for instance, somebody that <clears throat> they don't, they don't have no, their family ha hasn't gone, they don't have a history of going to college and, and their family doesn't believe in, in college. So they're just like, oh, I'm gonna just jump into the, to the work field. I just want to work after I graduate. Cause, um, that I don't, they just don't want to go to college. What, what, what advice do you have for them? So I can start. Um, I would say that if, if it's truly your choice, right? I, I think that's what it comes down to, that if it's truly your choice that you don't want to go to college, I don't think sometimes it's a little tough for first generation college students to say, hey, I want to be the first one because that's, you know, your parents might not be used to that. They might not know how to help you. So that's different, right? But so... If you want to go to college, go for it. Um, but if you if your it's your decision that you don't want to go to college because you you know it's not for you or you're really focused on this certain type of field, then that's okay. I think you all we want from you is to have a plan, right? And so I, sometimes we hear from students that say, yeah, "I'm just going to work," but they don't know where, or they just want to get minimum wage for the rest of the, their life. Like that's something that we don't necessarily want, right? We want you to have a job, but have a good job, right? With benefits where you don't have to, you know, hurt your body doing it. Yeah. So I think we want you to have a plan and so that you can grow in that career. You don't necessarily have to go to college, but we want you to, you know, have a resume, um, talk to people in the field. Part of the college center, we know a lot of people that work in different types of areas, you know, everywhere. So we can get you connected to certain companies even, right? Mm -hmm. Or we can get you to certain internships that can kind of get you a leg into that type of job. Mm -hmm. So the whole point is to have a plan and to really focus on if that's what you wanna do, then don't just let it slide and don't wait until the summer to start looking into it. 
Yeah, so just to add to that, um, I, I basically wanted to, to just kind of mirror that answer, right? Uh, for the most part, uh, it, 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 it is truly your decision, right? And there's no barriers beyond that decision because a lot of times mm -hmm. we hear that, oh, I want to go straight into work because my family can't afford me to go to college. If, if that's a barrier that, that you're dealing with, know that there is other ways to go around that, right? Just like Ms. Lara said, there's financial aid and scholarships. But let's say it is truly your decision that you just want to go out and work. Um, I basically try to tell my students this, and it's like a three-step plan. The first, the first step is going to be have a solidified plan. So just like what Ms. Lara said, right? Have a, have a resume built up to that specific career that you want to go into and have a, a, either a connection to a job that's already lined up or a very, very specific and strategic plan to go into that specific job. Number two, have a plan B. And usually that plan B is always submitting you know, your financial aid and even an application to a community college to maybe do a trade. Right. Like, let's say let's say a student does want to go in construction. It, like, let's say something were to happen when he graduates and that job is just not lined up anymore, because like, let's say COVID might have happened that that messed up things for like a lot yeah. of fields. Right. And, and there's a lot of people out there that didn't have that that <clears throat> that card in their back pocket. That's going to say, hey, here is my plan B. Right. So let's say plan A doesn't work out. I always try to tell my students or seniors, hey, apply to HCC, do your financial aid. But if you don't want to go at the end of the school year, don't go. Like if your plan A works out, go with your plan A. But at least if something happens with that job that's already lined up, you at least have HCC that you can fall back on and go into a trade. And all you have to do is get certified in six months and then go into that, that certification, uh, that certification <clears throat> job or that job that's certified. And then step three, have a plan C, right? Like let's say plan A and plan B don't work at all. Like let's say... The, the that job did, wasn't lined up in plan a plan b you still really don't want to go to school then have a plan c right like uh, try to find some other outlet but for the most part those are going to be the three steps that i usually try to tell my students mm -hmm. yeah no those, those are great pieces of advice because i feel like uh students don't necessarily know where they where they want to go after high school like i i i knew for instance like when when i was a freshman where I kind of was going, like my path, what my purpose in life was. So a lot of students don't have that early in life and, and they're lost and just, they're like, okay, I want to be, I, I want to be a welder. And then they're like, oh, never mind, I don't want to do that no more. I want to, I want to do engineering. So they're just mixed. And, and that's helpful, what you just said to students that are not, they're like, uh, should I just go straight to work? But like you mentioned, COVID just hit us and a lot of people were un unemployed. You get me? So, um, uh, a lot of people were unemployed. Sorry, I hear the phone. The my family's phone, but um, yeah, a lot of people were unemployed and and got hit with COVID and and slab jobs were slow. Everything was slowed down, so uh, people were like, we're, we're just gonna be unemployed. And and that's not my uh thing. Like for me to just sit at home and be I'm I'm, I'm unemployed. That's not what I do. So yeah, that's important for students to know where they want to go and to always have like you said a plan A, plan B, and plan C. Like me, like I, I graduate, I'm, I'm going to graduate high school and then even apply to college just, just in case, you know, I have that backup. And if, if everything goes right with plan A, I, I just have a plan B. Just if everything falls, plan B is right here. It's, not, it's nothing wrong, you know, because mm -hmm. you don't want to, it's like a table. You don't just want to put, put the, all the weight on one leg and then it falls. So that, that's a great saying. Have a plan A, have a plan B, and have a plan C as well. So there you go for students that just want to go straight to work. Yeah, uh, follow us advices, all right. What can class of 2022 do this year to be prepared for the decisions that they will need to make their senior year? Yeah, for sure. So those are my juniors, right? Um, I'm, I'm working with my juniors right now. Uh, I, we're already in the second semester, right? Uh, one plug that I did wanna, wanna say for my juniors is tax season is coming up, right? So, uh, and that's gonna be really important because we want to make sure that your parents file their taxes this upcoming January 25th all the way until April, because basically whenever you do your financial aid for next year, that's the tax, uh, the taxes that you're going to be using, right? So you want to make sure that you, uh, parents are filing taxes, right? And preparing for that for next year. It's basically setting you, you guys up for next year. Um, and aside from that, I think for junior year, it's all about uh, kind of starting to, to mold and finalize your plan right? Um, SAT is going to be in the spring as well. So we're in the spring right now. 
Um, we're not we're not technically in the second semester just because we haven't finished the third cycle just yet. But know that the SAT is coming up, so you know start preparing for that and make sure that you know when it's going to be and and everything like that. Um, but more than anything, for my juniors, it, it's all about just preparing and started kind kind of solidifying a plan for your senior year because. Uh, Mauricio, I think you can vouch for this. Uh, senior year flies, right? I mean, it's it's going to move. And I know I talk to my even my freshmen. I tell them high school is going to fly. It's going to move so so quick for you guys. Real and then fast. by the time I talk to them when they're seniors, they're like, Mr. Russell, like where did time go? Right? It, it literally like just flew it by. flies. Exactly. So you know, senior year is coming up. Start to take take things a little bit more seriously and and mold your plan and kind of finalize something. So when you do get to senior year you hit the ground running and you know exactly what you're going to be doing. So, so just kind of be, um, just prepared, just like be prepared, take, take the steps needed for your, uh, when you, when you do become a senior for them to already know like where they want to go, just right. don't already prepare yourself for success. Like you said, you know, don't, don't start late. If you want to do something, learn about it right now. You know, there's uh they can message you, on Teams, Ms. Lara, just so they can already know what kind of path they want to go. They can also even go on YouTube and already just start learning about where they want to go, what path they want to take in life. And I will say, be productive in the summer. So um, don't just lay around. <laughs> so, you know, go volunteer or even just, you know, join um, some sports team or something that will look, that will set you apart from everybody else in your application senior year. Just be active in the summer, um, even if it's not, you know, anything specifically, like you can babysit. And that's something that, you know, not everyone does. So it's just like little things that will set you apart in the, in the summer, because that's typically the time that you have a, a lot to do. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Just uh, find something that you love mm -hmm. and just tap to, tap into it, you know. Right. And in the summer, just don't be in bed all day. Go out there. If you love soccer, go play soccer. If you love entrepreneurship, study about entrepreneurship, business, how to uh, build a business with no capital. And I uh, just th things that interest you in your mind, but um, yeah. What advice would you give the juniors and seniors that are trying to balance family, work, and their ed education during the season of virtual learning, along with COVID nineteen? That they're just trying to balance everything at all. What what would you tell those students? So I can go. I think um, I I would first often say that um, it's okay to be overwhelmed. It's okay to feel like, you know, everything is changing and you're not sure what's happening because I think we all feel that way. Um, so it, it can be really tough, even though, you know, some people might play it off better than others, but I'm sure everybody is struggling in their own way. So really just um, take it easy. Um, you know, don't stress yourself out too much. Don't think that you have to be the same as you were before, because obviously times have changed. Um, so just kind of take it one day at a time and um, reach out to people that you truly care about or talk to somebody, right? We have counselors, we have family members, um, just really reach out if you are needing any sort of help, that's what we're here for. Um, it doesn't have to be you know, anybody official, just somebody that you can confide in if you really are struggling more than you think you can handle. Yeah, same. So just to kind of mirror what, what Ms. Lada said, um, I think it's okay to be selfish um, during this time during COVID. So if you do need to take some time for yourself and kind of, I, I feel like a lot of times students are are put with a lot of weight on their shoulders, right? Not like, like Mauricio, like you said, they have work because they have to support their family because COVID might have affected their family. Then they also have school work. And then they also have to like, might have siblings that they have to take care of. So that has to do with the family portion that you said. And I think a lot of times that we feel so responsible of doing those three things that we forget about ourselves and our, our mental health, right? So I honestly think that it's okay to take some time out of the day and at least for like 30 minutes, do something that you enjoy. If it's reading a book, go read a book. If it's go running a mile, go run a mile, right? But it's okay to be selfish during this time. And I feel like that's going to help you personally with your mental health. Um, and in regards to the balancing part, um, I think mo more than anything to, to help you balance everything is try to try to to do some type of routine, right? Uh, try to write things down, like whenever you wake up, okay, at this time to this time, I need to work on this from 11 a.m. to, you know, you know, 4 p.m. Exactly, right? To have a planner, have a planner and kind of structure your day. And I feel like whenever things are written down, it, it makes it a lot easier for students, 
Because a lot of times what I find students is what they do is they don't write anything down. They kind of just do it uh, off yeah. the dome and they're just kind of going, you know, hour by Let hour. Yeah. And I, I feel like they sometimes lose track of time and they start stacking things up on each other. And that's when things get overwhelming. But if you write things down, you know, to say, okay, I need to stop at this time, this time and start this at this time. And I feel like that's what's going to help a lot with, when it comes down to balance. Mm -hmm. I want to add to that really quickly. Um, for example, let's say you're not so much of a paper person and you realize that maybe you'll lose your plan or you'll lose some paper. Um, I know for me, I'm both. So I like to write things down and be on my phone. So if you're just, you live off of your, your, your phone and that's your life, mm -hmm. set reminders for yourself. Um, I know that iPhones and Samsungs have rem a reminder app. So just a reminder at, you know, every time at 11 a.m. you're going to take a walk outside or at 11 a.m. you're gonna start reading for 30 minutes. So that little reminder every day can probably keep you more on schedule than you know mm -hmm. if you lose a paper. <laughs> so just if, depending on what type of person you are. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm gonna answer that. Well, I'm gonna say like, um, just be like like Mr. Mr. Rocha said, just have self-care self time. Like um, I know it can be like a little bit stress, st stressful like, um, dealing with all this, you know, COVID-19, going to work, and then having to have, like, still do schoolwork, it, it's all stressful because it's like you're juggling a lot of things at the same time. So, uh, yeah, just t take take time for yourself. Uh, watch watch a movie. Uh, spend some time with, you know, a little brother, self-care time. Something that just t it takes it off your mind. Because um, I always say it's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, a lot of people running uh, sprints like they they just going fast at a, in, a, in another wrong direction. And I just like to take things step by step and knowing where I really want to go. I'd rather just have, you know, instead of just going full, full speed for me to know what path and take it slow, 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 slow. So, uh, like I said, it's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're not going to get there and, oh, uh, I'm, I'm going to get where I want to be in, uh, in a year. Sometimes it takes all you. Out of the 10 years, it's going to take one year that's going to change your life. So remember that, like, it's, it, all it takes is one year to change your life, what you want to do, whether it's a teacher, whether it's you being an engineer, just take your time, uh, have selfish time. Uh, like I said, sometimes it can be stressful, but uh, you can take a nap for one hour or just run a mile, something that just takes your mind off what you're doing. And it's important. We, we owe ourselves an hour a day. Uh, I think that's a percentage of, of our day because we have 24 hours so just a small percentage man just uh, something that you love whatever it is find it and uh yeah like uh it, it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen overnight uh even with me I'm, I'm at, at to it like I have a, a YouTube channel so I, I'm, I'm I'm still in high school and I was doing this when I was a junior as well so at times like I didn't even go to lunch because I had to do videos and nobody forced me to not go to lunch it was just the fact that I was really focused on the long term of this YouTube channel, what I wanted to do, um, how I wanted to get paid. This I was already learning, and I was still in high school, so my mind wasn't. I want to pass because right now I have A's. I only have one B, and I was like, I want to have good grades, but I still want to succeed in this YouTube. So it was just like me juggling, but I knew at the, at the end of the day it was gonna pay off, and 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 it is, and it's paying off. So that's just my part. Take your time. It's a, it's it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But uh, the last question is going to be what advice, I, this is kind of like the same questions, but just to finish it off, what advice do you have for seniors uh, about the world that awaits them after high school? Cool. So really good question to end the interview. Um, my best advice, to be honest with you, is going to be the world is a scary place if you allow it to be a scary place. Right. I think uh, whenever a student graduates, it, it's it's basically you setting yourself up for a long period of time. Right. Your next decisions that you're going to be making at the end of your senior year uh, will kind of kind of structure how your life is going to look, at least for the next couple of years. Right. Um, so make sure that you're taking care of your responsibilities and then also sprinkle in a little bit of fun. Right. And I say that because, I mean, you're young. Right. I, I remember whenever I was 18 and I left uh, my house to go off to college, you know, I always took care of my responsibilities, which was paying my bills and everything like that um, and making sure I was getting good grades when I was in school. But I also had my fun as well. Right. And I think that's what it's all about. I think it's uh, about being responsible, but also enjoying your youth. 
uh, going out and meeting different groups of people, opening your mind, and more than anything, just finding yourself as an individual. Because I'll be honest with you, like, when I was in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do, you know, after, you know, when, once I graduated, I had no clue, but I, I felt like I used my time at a university in college to basically find myself as a person. And I found out that I enjoy helping people, like that I'm a giver. I really like giving back to people because I find, I find satisfaction in that, right? I, I feel really good about myself whenever other people feel good about themselves, mm -hmm. right? So I found that about myself and I feel like students should use that time to find themselves. No, you're doing a great job, Mr. Roach. I just want to tell you, like, <laughs> you're doing a wonderful job, like helping, providing value to people. That's one of the best things you could ever do in this world, helping other people and creating the future because you're planting a seed in the future of the world. So that, that's powerful what you're doing. Appreciate it. Well, go ahead. Yeah, Blair. so, you know, I, I mean, I definitely agree with Mr. Rocha. I think it comes down to um, you leaving high school might come as a shock because you're like, now what? But that just means that it's your it's your time to really direct your life, right? So before it's like you going to school, you may be living with your parents, and now you really have a lot more freedom. So it's okay to change your change your mind sometimes or your path, right? You might think that you're gonna do something, and then something changes, or you find something else that you like better. So it's okay to change your mind, kind of go with the flow a little bit, but also know um, where you stand, like personally, right? Your morals and all of that. So once you get out there, you're going to start to notice a lot of crazier things and you're going to learn along with it. But all that, all that mat matters is, you know, being true to yourself and just uh, taking it from there one day at a time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to add to it so we can uh, wrap it up. But uh, yeah, just basically, I know you, it's going to be, you're going to feel lost in the beginning when you first graduate. It's not going to feel real when you graduate. And, and I heard it from my peers when they first graduated. They walked the stage. Uh, it didn't feel real the next day. felt like it was, they were done with high school. Uh, most of them didn't go to college, but that, that's why they said that they were basically done with. Because we wake up when we were little kids to up to this point, 18. And it just, it's just, it's a routine. Going to school, uh, like me, I didn't work. I just went straight to school. And that was basically my every day, going to school for eight hours, come back home, go to sleep, take a shower, eat, spend a little bit of time with family, and then the next day is school. And I really love that. So when school ends, it's like, this is what, this is my life. Like, now, now I either have to go to college or I have to go straight to the work field. So um, it, it's going to feel like not real at the same time, but just um, if you're feeling loud, just stay patient, know what you want to do, and uh, study what you want to do, study your craft. Most, uh, because I'm telling you the 20, when you're twenties, you can either waste your time and for it to be indestructible, or you can build something long-term for your family, for your kids. I always say, you know, you want to build something that your kids can, can outlive, like it's going to uh, get, you can pass it on to your kids, whether it's just you having an education or you passing on the knowledge that you learn. Uh, you can teach kids, you can, you can buy something to a kid or you can teach him, teach him what you never learned as a kid. And they can have a powerful mind. So don't waste your 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 years, your teenage years, your 20s. Build something that in your 30s and 40s, you can kind of like, okay, I work in, in my 20s instead of partying every weekend. I uh I build something. It's a it's a balance, like Mr. Rocha said. Have fun, but also know that not too much fun, because you're gonna waste your time. So it's just a balance of okay, know when it's time to work and know when it's time to party. And that's important. A lot of people need to know that. So yeah, just um, stay patient and uh, trust the journey, Tr trust the journey, trust the process and it's all gonna pay off at the end. So uh, yeah, man, th thank you, Ms., uh, Mr. Rocha for your time. Thank you, Ms. Lara for, uh, for assisting people that need anything that you guys wanna add, where can they reach out to Ms. Lara and Mr. Rocha? If people are, you know, juniors, uh, even se like seniors and, and sophomores, where can they reach out to you guys? Yeah, I think everyone can find us um, on Teams. So I'm Daniela Lara on Teams, Mr. Rocha's Juan Rocha on Teams. Message us. Uh, you can text us back to our college phone number. You can always stop by, come check out our new college center. And then you can always um, schedule one-on-one -on -one advising sessions with in both of us. So the bit.ly is bit.ly slash AHS advising. So if you just type that up, then you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one advising session with us. And it doesn't have to be about college specifically, like we said, um, if it's just to figure out 
what you maybe want to do. It doesn't have to be college. Maybe just trying to figure out what type of job you would like. Any sort of conversation like that, we're open to. And so feel free to come and talk to us. Yeah. And if you're in person, uh, we're here in the new building, G215. So come and come and see us if you're in person or even if you're virtual there, you know, you can come visit us either way in G215. Yeah. So just make sure to go stop by and visit. I'm, I'm make sure to go stop by. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go visit and uh, we're, we're going to have a great conversation, Mr. Rocha, but uh, <laughs> yeah, just uh, tap in on teams, Ms. Uh, Daniela, Lara, Mr. Rocha on teams. You can find them. Um, yeah. I have an email too, right? They can reach out to you guys. So yeah, I can reach out through email as well. So, uh, but yeah, guys, thank you for watching another episode with Marcus Nation. I want to uh, thank the host, that, the the guest that we had today. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what, what you guys want to see next. I'm out.